Hello travelers, Boardman21 here, and today I've got my first build of 1.0 for you, and that's going to be the Dive Bomb Falconer. This is the build I told you guys that I would be starting with. The 1 to 76 guide is almost ready. We've just been having tr trouble getting into the servers to actually play it enough to get to 76 on that. However, I went ahead and made the build guide for the endgame version of it in offline, since you can access that full time right now without any issues. With that in mind, I want to let you guys know there was some worry that this build had lost a ton of of damage. I don't really know where that came from because no one had even played it yet to begin with, but I can tell you that it's still hitting for hundreds of thousands of damage to mobs in high corruption. Here we're sitting at just over 200 corruption in this gameplay and just absolutely destroying the mobs. Both the falcon knives and dive bomb hit really, really hard, and with that it allows you to do a ton of single target damage. Now this build is great for both bossing and speed farming in the end game. However, for arena pushing, I wouldn't really recommend it as it can be a little squishy, especially when you're just getting surrounded by tons of enemies, which isn't what really happens to you when you're doing a boss or speed farming through the echoes. You kind of go at more of a pace. A lot of the damage reduction from this build comes from both 100% glancing blow, so you get 35% DR, and also the fact you're always on the move and the rogue gets a lot of DR while moving. A lot of that from the nodes, the passive nodes, evasion, and tailwind. So keep that in mind that you always want to be on the move, so you're going to be kind of moving as much as possible, only spamming exp explosive trap when you're not about to take hits that way you can be moving whenever you do get hit so that you get that glancing blow plus the DR for moving at the same time. Now with all that in mind let's go ahead and break down the skills, the passives and just how this build works. For skills we're running falconry aerial assault, dive bomb, explosive trap, and smoke bomb. For falconry, you can get up to plus four levels for this, for aerial assault and dive bomb due to the unique bow talents of Valor that we're wearing. However, I got plus three, plus three, plus two. So you can definitely get more than this with better rules. The build planner, which will be part of the max rule guide, will have that so that you have 24 points for each so you can know where to put them. Now for falconry, we have this set up to boost the falcon's damage as much as possible, both scaling with us, scaling with the attacks we use, and of course just the more modifiers inside the tree itself so we've got one point in falconer's journey this is huge to give the falcon more damage one percent per level so at level 100 that's a hundred percent and per point of decks you have 100 decks that's another hundred percent so this is a huge more modifier for you three points is is it a bird for 15 percent more falcon damage tripled for falcon strikes three points in side by side for the remaining cooldown reduction after skill use there one point in trained to hunt for that highest increase of damage will give the falcon's general damage so for us we're stacking bow damage so if we have 300% increased bow damage the falcon will get 75% of that which is 225% increased damage so you just scale your own damage and that will increase the falcon's damage for go for the eyes this is highest added crit chance again we're doing bow attacks with explosive traps so we're going to try and get to 100% bow critical strike chance on this build currently i have 50% the falcon gets 75% of that as well as for passives we get 5% base for the falcon there so he's sitting at at least 50% base critical strike chance or not base but he has at least 50% we want to get him to 100% so that he's always critting to maximize his damage because you're doing a lot of crit damage thanks to exposed weakness this gives you 20 5% per stack of your crit multi to the falcon. How this works is every time we do a bow critical strike chance, which we will be doing with explosive trap, up to two times per second, so up, and the buff lasts 10 seconds, so you can get up to 20 stacks of this, and since we're using a bow critical strike chance, he'll get our bow critical strike multiplier. We have a ton of that in this build. You can easily get into the hundreds of percent. We're at about 400% on this build, but you can get it to 600, 700 without a problem, and with that, he gets up to, at 20 stacks, 500% of that. So if you have 500% bow critical strike multiplier, he gets 500% of that which is 2500% minion crit multiform and there's other ways that we stack it elsewhere on top of what he will get through passes and other things so you can really scale the crit hit damage massively which is why you really want to give him a ton of critical strike chance we also have four points in avian stamina for extra falcon strikes one point in hunter spoil for health and mana gained back two points in bird of play for kill threshold which is great for bosses one point in falconer's mark two points in marking strikes so that 40 percent chance of any attack your falcon does and 50 percent chance from each hit of the falcon strikes will have a chance to apply the falconer's mark which we will consume when we use explosive trap and hit enemies and then that with three points in avian arsenal will give 30 percent of our flat bow damage 
as a melee damage to the falcon every time that we do that you can have up to 10 stacks of this which means that up to 300 percent of your flat so if you have 100 flat bow damage that's giving your falcon at 10 stacks 300 flat melee damage which is huge there's other areas that we're scaling flat damage for him as well so when you get that flat damage race super high with that increased crit chance and then critting super hard after all the increases to damage and more modifiers and all the trees that crit multi kicks in and that is why you're hitting enemies for hundreds of thousands and the training dummy for millions of damage every hit it's huge for aerial assault we have this set up just to be able to move get health back mana back and reduce some cooldowns so we've got four points in avian hunter one point in skyward swoop five points in healing gust three points in refreshing resolve one point in coordinated assault three points in covering fire so the wing burst every time that you aerial assault will apply frailty stacks which is a good defensive boost for us three points in aerial prowess two points in falcon havoc one point in torrent of talons and that'll round it off for us in the aerial assault tree we have with dive bomb plus two levels here four points in rush of the hunt which the last three points of this is not actually currently working but you're going to want that cooldown recovery so we still have them in there three points in united assault four points in focused hunter for that increased damage as well as making it a zero mana costing skill for us which is nice three points in hindering beak strike for that increased area four points in rushing wings and four points in devastating dive now the cooldown duration does get increased here which is what's getting us to over eight seconds but we're going to be getting that down to about one second when you're constantly having traps going off and using bow attacks which is really nice so you'll spam bosses a ton with that then for explosive trap we have this converted to uh, bow attacks with blast rain so we have two points in minefield three points in trap sprinkler two points in clustered explosions and one point in blast rain to convert it to bow attack then we have for mana efficiency four points in blueprint and two points in sabotage here to reduce that mana cost as much as possible with one point in sky signal every trap that goes off is going to give physical penetration with an unlimited amount of stacks to your falcon a big damage boost here one point in free lofting bird reduces falcon skills cooldown recovery every time one of those traps go off which allows you to use dive bomb and aerial assault and falcon knives even more often one point in smoke trap since we're not ex having our traps go off immediately they'll actually arm first which is going to give us dust shroud stacks you can get five to ten dust shrouds almost at all times with this even more if you're constantly spamming explosive trap that's a huge defensive boost and it'll really boost your glancing blow as well as your dodge chance and then the last three points and tinkering design for that detonation area to be larger which makes them go off much easier then for smoke bomb we have this setup for defense as well as offense the defense side is the dust shrouds so we've got one point in shrouded in darkness four points in rapid concealment again we're getting so many dust shrouds through explosive trap you don't necessarily need these you can build into armor shred instead or into more crimson stacks if you want However, I didn't. I like the dust routes just to have them guaranteed from it. Then we have 5 points in Generosity, 5 points in Lingering Fumes, 5 points in Smoke Blades for that 20 flat melee damage for every second you're inside Smoke Bomb. This is a big boost because our Falcon is doing melee damage so you can get up to 80 flat melee damage to your Falcon through this as long as he's in that cloud with you. With you. For passives, we have this set up with 21 points in the Rogue, our base class here with four points in steady hand one point in guile five points in evasion five points in dodge and parry five points in agility and one point in sapping strikes so that every time dive bomb goes off we're getting a little health and a little mana back which is nice we got eight points in the marksman with all eight and draining arrows so that we attack faster with explosive trap as well as get 40 health back every time we use it with blade dancer eight points in cloak of shadows for that dexterity which is flat to damage as well as some dodge for us and then glancing blow chance here as well and then seven 73 points in the falconer with two points in wilderness scout five points in outlander tenacity so the more maximum health we have the more endurance threshold we have which is really nice to stab off those one shots five points in raptor's wings five points in handler one point in crimson skies your falcon's doing so many hits that you should be constantly at three stacks of crimson shroud especially with falcon strikes going off all the time that one does a ton of hits just by itself one point in rangers mark three points in blast radius six points in evasion tactics three points in relentless talent so we get that health gain every time the falcon does a hit five points in deflect and weave for more glancing blow one point in intuitive connection so that we insta cast falcon strikes and dive bomb six points in needle like precision for that minion crit chance and crit multi as well as our crit chance and crit multi which then goes to our falcon as well six points in the 
the feathers here for increased armor on falcon hits we get a bunch of hits with the falcon so we get a nice boost to armor here six points in tailwind for reduced damage while moving increased move speed and dodge rating this will be doubled effects as long as the falcon is hit in the last four seconds which should always be happening and then seven points in finesse them for that health gained on crits that we do as well as more critical strike avoidance this will also give your minion even more critical strike multiplier as he will get three percent more crit multi per two percent of your critical strike avoidance. so as long as you're crit capped at 100 percent just with that, he's already going to get 150% more minion crit multi, which is huge for him. And then for the character sheet, as you can see here, I am lacking cold resist, lightning, and physical. Again, I just kind of ran out of room on my gear. I don't have perfect slots at the moment. And if you take morning frost off, you can definitely get your cold and physical back. I have 98 decks, and with morning frost, that reduces these two by 98%. So it's really hard to max those. So if you find yourself in trouble dying too much to cold and physical, just take morning frost off. You don't really need them in this build because your falcon is doing so much damage anyways. But for that final boost of giving a ton of flat damage to the falcon with avian, that's why we have it on we do have quite a bit of armor and dodge again once you start getting buffs you're gonna have both of those go up remember you get two percent more armor per falcon hit recently so this will skyrocket up to 40 percent plus usually in combat dodge rating with dust routes this is gonna skyrocket with all of that because you'll have a ton of dust routes going on and then also remember that we are stacking as much decks as possible and as much health as possible for that endurance threshold here and then the decks just for the dodge rating and the flat damage we're getting out of it remember the falcon also gets one percent more more damage per point here so this is almost a hundred percent more damage for the falcon as well which is really really nice for the inventory here you want to go with a talons of valor and then for the lp on it try and get the critical strike chance with bow attack speed as well as critical strike multiplier you can also get just more critical strike chance on this as well but it does come with a ton of bow critical strike chance flat and then of course you get those flat levels and then the big reason why this is best in slot is that when you critically strike an enemy your falcon gains plus 25 melee damage for four seconds so you can get that up to four times because it has a one second cooldown and then it also recovers 25 percent of the remaining cooldown cooldowns which is huge so that's why we want to build towards a hundred percent crit Again, the Morning Frost here, definitely not needed for the build, and it's going to reduce all that physical and cold resist. So if you're struggling with that or until you really have all the best gear, which I don't have a lot of exalts on, so I could get more physical and cold resist, especially with some sealed affixes, you can make it work into the build. For the chest here, don't forget that increased health is kind of what you really want. Here I have some health regen, but I could have even more health on this build if I had flat health on this as well. You kind of want the exalted affix to be dex, not by vitality so i don't have perfectly slotted gear but the implicits is what you're really after here with that up to 24 melee damage for the falcon which is really nice and again you can wear a woven flesh to get your critical strike avoidance here and with lp on that just get health dex or vitality whichever that you'd prefer again a woven flesh is nice because that 100 csa on there is one easy to cap it for you and again is an offense bonus to your falcon and then for the idols get this minion critical strike multiplier here it rules up to i believe 25 percent Yep, you can get 25% on it and then up to 60% bow critical strike chance with four of those You should have a ton of critical strike chance for your bow and then of course the Critical strike multiplier for you and your minion is both affecting your minion, which is a good boost for him So he basically gets 20% straight up and then the 20% there if you're at 20 seconds he gets 500% of that So that'd be a hundred percent for him just from this idol alone and then for how to play the build, it's really simple. I like to put Aerial Assault and Dive Bomb on Autocast. Then I go around, use a Smoke Bomb whenever you have a big enemy and you want to get some extra damage going as well as your Dust Routes going for that extra damage. Then you rain down your Explosive Traps, which is going to start getting your cooldowns spamming down much faster. You can throw in a Falcon Knives there. You can see each one of those Falcon Knives was hitting for half a million damage there. On the big enemies, uh, you'll be able to see a Dive Bomb much easier here. You can see that it's going to hit with Smoke Bomb active here. You should be getting three to four million damage on the training dummies here pretty easy and right there it's really hard for me to tell but we're, we're hitting without full stacks for two and a half million but you can get to four to five million there just with the gear that i have here you can definitely get that to 10 million plus if you really have all the best in slots and you're really going all out but that's it you just run around you spam some traps have them go off dive bomb's gonna clear in a huge area you lay smoke bomb down for your rares and stuff and then falcon knives whenever you need to get a whole bunch of extra hits but that's gonna be it for this guide i hope you guys enjoyed it i hope you're enjoying the falcon in 1.0 and as always stay safe and i'm gonna leave you guys with some gameplay
Thank you.